people. I'm Ginny Metherill. I'm a fourth generation witch. Today we're back with my ever popular almanac series looking at all the witchcraft you can do on witch days, when and why throughout the month of October. As always with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a nice general overview of the witchcraft trends that run throughout the month of October and that you can generally incorporate into your day-to-day -day witchcraft practice. And then we'll look at the nitty-gritty detail of what witchcraft you can do on what day and why. So, with that said, let's start with my overview. October is truly the month when we're starting to look towards the darker half of the year. The nights are now drawing in. We have had the equilux, the equal night and equal day, and so now all we have looked forward to is the nights getting longer. But this is a joy in itself for us witches, obviously, because we're coming into that season of the witch, and October very, very much is part of this. October is a month that precedes the month of the dead, which is November. There are so many indicators in October about us looking towards the dead, namely our flowers. We've got the beautiful dahlias still with us, but only just. Our gourds are fattening and we will turn these into lanterns to light our way through those darker nights. The funereal chrysanthemums are in full bloom at the moment. It's also the time for apples, and apples are part of food for the dead. They're beloved by the dead. I'm not quite sure why apples are so beloved by the dead, but they are. And making them up as offerings to the dead at this time is a huge part of our traditions as a witch. The apples should be gathered once they're fallen from the tree, and you'll hear a lot about apples and apple traditions throughout this video, because apples are one of the biggest parts of October. Mm, and delicious too. I am in the west country of the UK and we are all about apples. There's not a village around here that doesn't have its own apple day. We spend all October collecting apples, pressing apples, going to cider making, making cider apples. Traditionally, cider should be made from apples that have fallen from the tree and have lain on the ground and ripened for a few days. And the cider pressing should be done when the year is waning but the moon is waxing to bring forth the great juice of those apples. So this year, the best time for pressing your apples, either for apple juice or cider, is between the 2nd and the 17th of October. The other trend that runs throughout the months of October is, of course, the mushrooms. Mushrooms are irrevocably bound up with witchcraft. Witches are said to have dominion over fungi. So a particularly evil fungi, actually, Witches apparently are able to destroy crops by planting them with blight, destroy your apples and your stored goods with mould and bring ergot to your corn crops. You know, there's a dichotomy with mushrooms, isn't it? Because on one hand, they're utterly delicious. I love mushrooms. I love them. And on the other hand, with very little effort, they can kill you. Therefore, there has been a huge tradition throughout the years by our ancestors. Mushrooms have this magical property. They're both life-giving and life-taking. And this can be seen great in fairy rings, which are prominent at this time. There's actually one in my garden that sprung up this year. And actually, I'm really pleased because it's just a plain old field mushroom fairy ring. And I forgot to take a picture of it before my husband, in huge joy, went out and picked them all. So you can't see the fairy ring anymore. But it was very pretty whilst it was there. Fairy rings are, of course, named for their purpose. They are the stage where fairies dance. Should you, as a human, stumble across fairies dancing within the fairy rings, you will be compelled to dance within them for a year and a day. They also mark the size of buried treasure and show that there are underground fairy homes nearby. Now, if you want to see these fairy homes, what you need to do is you need to go out on a moonlit night, preferably a full moon night, and run nine times clockwise around the fairy ring. This will enable you to see and hear the fae singing and dancing at their best. But beware, because you might be trapped and you might be forced to dance for a year and a day. 
I mean, I love the mushroom magical traditions. The Christians, of course they did, said that it was us witches who planted the phallic and obscene stinkhorns in good Christians' gardens to, you know, upset them and send them on their way. And of course, we cannot talk about mushrooms without looking at the fly agaric mushroom. I love a fry agaric. It's so beautiful. Someone said to me the other day that they were incredibly scared of them. You know, they just looked at them and brought, obviously, some past life trauma back to them because they'd seen this because they are so poisonous. and They make you so ill if you take them. There's a lot of processing that has to go through the fly agaric before you can make it sort of safe to eat. Fly agaric mushrooms were, of course, those ones that they put in witches' flying ointments. Witches' flying ointments had a lot of psychotropic qualities in them, such as henbane, nightshade, hemlock, uh, other different types of mushrooms. I mean, it's not something that you really ever want to use. Um, they would put it into a potion and put it on their skin, because if you ate this concoction, you would probably die. So to absorb it through your skin and through your glands, so under your arms, between your legs on the side of your neck, those glands, then you would fly. However, there is something magical about these beautiful and ethereal fruits. And finally, October is a great time for our wildlife. The birds are beginning to migrate, so you'll see the swallows gathering upon the rails and those birds, which are winter visitors, begin to migrate into us, such as the field furs and the red wings, which are some of my favourite birds. There's flocks and flocks of them round me. Uh, Mr Metherill says that there is an annual debate in my house, whether it's a field fur or a red wing that I've seen, because I've got such bad eyesight, I can't tell the difference. And if I don't know the difference, it's always a field fur. But all the other animals, such as the badgers, squirrels, hedgehogs, foxes, are all incredibly active before the darkening months. They are fattening themselves up. And in fact, I'm slightly addicted to hedgehog TikTok, hedgehog talk or whatever it's called, where they just have pictures of hedgehogs doing things. And I'm just like, oh my God, it's so cute. It's so lovely. It's great. <laughs> So that is my witchcraft overview for the month. Pick some mushrooms in their magical form. Eat some apples because they're excellent for divination. More on that later. And look out for the amazing wildlife that is still rampant across the land. Now, having said that, let's get into the day-to-day -day detail. Now, normally I'd start with the 1st of October, but I didn't really have anything to say about the 1st of October apart from it's there. So we're going to go to the 2nd. The 2nd of October is the night of the new moon. This new moon is in Libra. Now, astrologers believe that each new moon takes on the aspects of the zodiac sign that it is in. Libra is known for harmony, relationships and balance. So if you're in a fight with somebody at the moment, now is a great time for making up. It's particularly good for peaceful overtures. You'll find that your overtures will be reciprocated with glee and joy. If you don't have any feuds going on in your life, why not use this new moon as a chance to look at your own self and bring balance and harmony and self-love to you? You cannot have a relationship with somebody else unless you love yourself first. So have a look and see how brilliant you are and all the things that you are truly excellent at. And so why not write them down under this new moon and you can then fold up the paper and put it away till the next new moon and you'll have a much better appreciation of your talents and greatness and this will be exuded to the world. This new moon is also evolved in an annular eclipse. This sadly can only be seen over the Pacific Ocean and at uh, the very bottom of South America. I think sort of the Falkland Islands gets it. But it's one of those ring of fire eclipses, which I'm desperate to see, where the moon covers the centre of the sun and all you see is its rays around the outside. It seems magnificent. However, if I did look at this annular eclipse, I would apparently be blighted with terrible bad luck. So eclipses are looked on by almost all nations on the earth as bad luck, foretellers of death and destruction. They can also disrupt your own prana and your own life force. And this is the reason why you should not go out and look at a solar eclipse, especially if you're pregnant, because it will have untold consequences for your unborn child. So, stay indoors. However, if I had the chance to see this solar eclipse, I would so be there because I've always wanted to see one. 
Moving along swiftly, we come to the 4th of October. This is a day for divination, and you're going to divine using oak apples, those galls made by varying creatures that you find on oak branches. If you cut open an oak apple and inside you find a fly or a maggot, then this means that there is going to be a great year full of bounty ahead of us. If you break open your gall and you find it filled with spiders, it means that the year ahead is going to be extremely naughty. And I don't quite not know I don't quite know what that superstition actually means. If you're going to be naughty, I mean am I going to be naughty? And how naughty? You know, am I going to be what am I gonna do? It'd be quite interesting, isn't it? Anyway, if you do find a ghoul with some spiders in it, do let me know because I'd love to know if you're gonna be naughty and how that naughtiness might take shape. Likewise, if you cut open a gall apple and there's nothing in it, then you are going to have a dearth of goodness throughout the year. So the 9th of October is the traditional date that you should release your pigs to eat the beech mast so that they fatten in time for your winter solstice preparations. Now, pigs love a beech mast, so set them out there and they will grow happy, fat and make delicious bacon, should that be what you wish for. The 14th of October is our day. It is the day when witches are said to start their preparations to celebrate the wonderful Sabbath that is known as Samhain, Halloween. And therefore, we are out and about. Good people are supposed to go off and hide because they don't want to look at us old hags, you know, being witchy and flying around on our broomsticks because we might cast curses on them. However, it is a good idea to start your preparations for Halloween now. It's only two weeks away, after all. The 17th of October is the night of the full moon. This full moon is a supermoon, the second of this year's supermoons. So the moon itself is going to appear up to 30% brighter and 14% bigger. It's known as the blood moon, the hunter's moon, the moon of the fall of the leaves, says the Algonquin tribe. It is the October moon. It is a wonderful moon for all those who need to do work at night. And therefore it is welcomed because as the dark comes upon us, we need the light of the moon to show us the way. This particular moon is governed by Mars and in Aries, which is all about actions. It's a great full moon to use for those spells that you want to force change, for example, or force action in your life. You know, if you're stuck in a rut, use this full moon tonight as a force for good. And by November's full moon, you will find that that force has come into effect. Now, if this full moon does not oversee a frost during its tenure in the sky, then be no frost until November's full moon. So it'll be frost free between those two times. So let's, you know, fingers crossed, let's hope so. I'm not great with frost, it's a bit cold. Today is also the day, the 17th, to watch out for earthquakes. Now, in the UK, we don't get many earthquakes, but if we're going to have one, it's going to happen today. So, you know, hold on to your china. The 18th of October is the perfect day to choose your life partner. Now, there's several ways you can do this. You can do it by asking the cards to reveal them to you. And if you choose today that person to be your lifelong partner, then you will be blessed, fortunate and loved. If you wanted to use the true October spell of choosing your husband, what you do is you take your apple and you peel your apple and you peel it with your right hand. So peel, 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 peel. You take all the peel off and then you stand in the centre of your room and with your right hand, you cast the peel over your left shoulder. Then you turn around three times and you have a look at the peel behind you on your floor and see what letter of the alphabet it has created. And that letter will represent the first name of your future partner. Now, if it falls onto the floor and breaks up and there's no letters, then you will never have a lifelong partner. Whenever I did this, I always got J and that's Mr. Metal's first name. I think it works, so have a go. You could save this particular charm until the 21st of October because this is officially the UK Apple Day. Now this is a modern, it's only a hundred years old or so tradition, but it was there to celebrate the wonderfulness that is apples and the fact that we all rely on them so much in this part of the world. I couldn't live without apples actually. I don't think my daughter could live without apples. I buy apples and I put them in the fruit bowl and my daughter comes in and says, oh, apples. She says, and she turned around to me the other day and she said, I'm like a pony. I can't resist an apple. I know, I know. The 22nd of October is a favourite of mine, not because it's a witchy day, it's not. It's actually of the Christian tradition that the day the world was created. And it happened on the 22nd of October, 4004 BC, I'm to understand. 
So there you go. The 23rd of October is the day when the winter migrant, the woodcock, arrives to our shores. I love a woodcock, they're such charming creatures. It was believed, however, they had left their summer quarters. And do you know where their summer quarters were? No, I'll tell you. They were on the moon. So on the 24th, the sun enters Scorpio. And as ever, I want to read to you from the calendar of shepherds to see what the Scorpio man and woman is like. The man born under Scorpio shall have good fortune. He shall be great fornicator, and the first wife he shall have in marriage shall become very religious. Oh dear. He shall suffer pain in his privy members at 15 years old. That's probably because he's too busy fornicating. He shall be hardy as a lion, and he shall be merry and love good company of merry folk. He shall be in danger of enemies at 24 years old, and he shall escape and live to 85. I think I'd like to be a Scorpio man. They sound like they're having a fun time. They've only got to put up with a bit of, you know, discomfort when they're 15. But otherwise, lovely. Right, let's see what they say about the Scorpio woman. And if this is you, let me know. The woman shall be amiable and fair. She will not be long with her first husband. And afterwards, she'll enjoy with another by her good and true service. Oh. She shall suffer pain in her stomach and wounds in her shoulders, so bad shoulders and bad tummies, and she ought to fear her latter days, oh dear, which shall be doubtful by reason of venom, so she'll be poisoned in her later days. She shall live 70 years only. Yeah, you don't really want to be a Scorpio woman. Is this you? Are you a Scorpio woman? Let me know in the comments below. The 29th of October is a day that if you're troubled by restless spirits, the way you can get rid of them is by taking a spayed bitch into your home overnight. And this will be so repulsive to the restless spirits that they will just leave. Alternatively, you could just call me and I'll get rid of them for you much quicker. And finally, we come to that greatest Sabbath of all the year, the 31st of October which is known by so many different names. Winter's Eve, The Great Witch's Sabbath, Halloween, Samhain, Punky Night, Duck Apple Night. There's so many different names for this festival because it is the big one. It is the uncanniest day in the whole calendar of the year. The witches, like me, are abroad. Devils abound and the spirits are walking because of course the veil between the worlds is at its thinnest. So this night, if you're not any of those above, then please stay by your fire and do not let it go out because your fire going out will allow the evils to enter. It is a night of great joys and celebrations in so many different ways. But if you're not wishing to partake of those great joys and celebrations and rather would keep the evil from your doors, then by all means, take a horseshoe and put it up your chimney because this will stop the witches flying and take your horseshoe and put it over your entrance so no evil can enter within. However, if you are a witch, what you need to do is wait for my actual Halloween video, which will be coming out next week or so, and you will be able to discover all the traditions, superstitions, charms and ways of the witch at Halloween. There's only a week or so to go on my raffle. Do go to raffle.com and you can have some wonderful sessions with me, divination sessions, witchcraft sessions and a mini witchcraft course, all to be won. So have a look. Come to my Patreon and join the Coven. We do a new aspect of witchcraft every single month. We're just about to do crossroads because there's so much that happens at a crossroad. So come and join that if you want to learn witchcraft. And otherwise, just like and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video.